Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest balance discussion. My name is John. I'm one of the community managers on the Company of Heroes 3 team, uh, and I am, of course, joined by the uh, terrific balance team. Uh, let's do some quick intros. Uh, Darren, yep. uh, who are you and what do you do on the team? Hey, my name is Darren. I'm one of the balance designers and, and get gameplay designers for Company of Heroes 3. We put on a lot of hats here. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and another fine uh, designer in a hat. Jason, uh, what do you do on the team? Hello, I'm Jason. Uh, I'm just a uh, balance lead on Company of Heroes 3. It's nice to be here. Okay, so uh, folks, we know that there was obviously some big news last week. Uh, Relic announced uh, that we're becoming an independently run studio. I'm sure you have a lot of questions about that, but that's not going to be our focus for this live stream. Uh, for more information on that news, you can find our latest blog post at community.companyofheroes.com. So our focus for today is, of course, to talk about all the multiplayer balance changes coming in Coral Viper, our 1.60 PC update. Uh, so I feel like we should just get into it. Um, Jason, Darren, uh, before we kind of run through the patch and run through all the patch notes and all the changes that you folks have made, uh, I kind of want to talk about maybe like the state of multiplayer and the state of multiplayer balance or the meta and mm -hmm. your sort of current feelings on that. Um, Jason, let's maybe start yeah. with you. What, how, how do you how do you feel about multiplayer right now in Company of Heroes? Uh, very high level, um, very broad topic. So we could go on forever. But some observations from me has been um, one of our reads of the meta has been like there's been a lot of focus on basically this mid game overloading of uh, your opponent. Basically, but a lot of our builds, a lot of our strategies right now are dependent on this idea of like trying to build up the strongest army you can in the shortest amount of time you can, and then trying to break your opponent. And basically, it's all about tempo. And this is great from from a certain extent. Um, we it, it is a lot of co uh, it is really cool that players can play really aggressive, but at the same time, um, it's probably a little overkill right now. Um, we do want other strategies to have room to breathe, such as things like scaling, more scaling builds, uh, especially late game builds, um, and also kind of reduce ever so slightly the dominance of light vehicles. Um, yeah. I think though that you know, I also had the same read on this, though, more, more so with the not just the light vehicles, but more regarding in the late game tech. Mm -hmm. Tech structures for certain factions where you do, sometimes don't see certain tech builds from particularly our Axis factions, wins, but mm -hmm. we're, we'll be getting that into that later mm -hmm. regarding our patch. We've got a yeah. lot of changes coming for them. Okay. Yeah. And then we want to see a bit more strategy with, uh, with the, a bit more of the heavier units instead of we have some changes for. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I'm also kind of curious. Uh, I know we always get a lot of questions about our sort of methods and, and the way that we approach uh, uh, mm -hmm. multiplayer balance. So I'm kind of curious, uh, how do we do that? How, how, how do we balance and, and what is yeah. sort of the team's overall approach or sort of philosophy when it comes to making um, changes that affect the, the multiplayer um, meta? Yeah. So, you know, it's been a while since we've last talked about this, so it's good you asked. Um, <laughs> So one of the first uh, one of the things I want to bring up is like what 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 are like our main goals? Now we've we've iterated this a few times, but you know it's important. So again, our main goal is strategic diversity, right? We want players to be able to play with the tools that they want to in the scenario they want to in the playstyle that they want to, right? We want to enable it so that if you encounter a unit that you think is cool, you can use it. Um, or, you know, there's all kinds of different strategies for you to use and also for you to adapt to your opponent. We, uh, all of these are very important to us. Uh, and we, we broadly, all of this falls under strategic diversity. Another important part is also the tactical gameplay, right? While, you know, we want different builds, we also, it's still very important that, um, you know, micro positioning is a very key part of the game. And both of these are very important to us. Um, so yeah. In terms of how we kind of achieve that, uh, every patch we we kind of do we kind of go through like uh, this main phase of like monitoring. We kind of see, hey, what's going on? Uh, how are players playing? What are they talking about? You know, we do read uh, the forums and whatnot, uh, and we, we we pay attention to like uh, what people are saying, live streams, and all all that kind of stuff. And we also have a lot of stats. Um, so on top of all of that, we kind of synthesize some reads of like, for example, that was the read of our current 1.5 or, or a patch of what's going on. Um, and we kind of go from there as like, okay, uh, that's our read. 
how do we kind of what what, what would be good for the game and how do we get there mm -hmm. uh, and then we start synthesizing individual changes um yeah darren anything else to, to add for for sort of the team's approach to to how we do this work uh, no i think jason said everything of us using in data uh, reading reading threads as well as keeping an eye on and things yeah. like replay a's and how like the game is developed mm -hmm. being from like how other players are using it okay um so so jason that 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 all of that work is obviously on a certain timeline right so mm -hmm. so you know we need to ensure that like we have that time to monitor mm -hmm. to sort of try and internally make some of these these adjustments and changes test them implement them qa them and then yeah. release them right yeah there, there's a bit of uh there's a bit of a delay there mm -hmm. as some players have noticed <laughs> uh we try our best uh to stay ahead of things but it is it is hard having to predict things in the future mm -hmm. um but yeah um we often have to work on changes very far in advance um and sometimes that's good sometimes you know it, it makes runs into some trouble yeah but yeah um, and you just, you know, it's just, a, just a matter about like predicting the future, like you said. So don't worry, Jason, I, I I've ordered you a crystal ball. I'm going to put it <laughs> on your desk. So you'll have no trouble sort of, yeah. you know, seeing into the future and, and predicting everything that's going to be happening in the game. Um, oh, actually yeah. something I want to quickly bring up. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and this is something I, I don't think we've iterated enough, uh, for us, our main goal is that there is strategic diversity at all levels and in all modes, uh, we do not prioritize certain modes over the other. Um, while that might look the case, a lot of the time that's because some of the time it's easier to get a read or sometimes it, e it is easier for us to modify certain modes because they're easy, like either we have a heightened understanding of them at the time or we know, like for example, it's easier to test certain modes than others. Mm -hmm. um, but very much our goal is that all modes and all skill brackets see balanced play. Now, the play might be different at different skill levels. That's totally fine. Uh, but our main goal is that it doesn't matter what ELO you are. We don't believe in the idea of like, you need to get good. No, uh, it's we want the game to be balanced for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an important goal. Now, that's a very lofty goal. And I acknowledge that we haven't hit that all the time. But we are trying our best. And we will take feedback in terms of like, you know, what where are we not hitting, where we're not. And we try every patch to try and make that better. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate the clarification because like mm -hmm. you said, you know, the experience for all, all of our players is, is super important to us. Um, so let's maybe jump over to uh, the patch notes here and we can talk about some of the uh, big changes that, that your team is going to be implementing um, in uh, Coral Viper 1.6. Um, so I think we have uh, quite a few uh, general changes that we want to touch That's on great. first. Uh, where do we want to start here, uh, Jason? Sure. We can start with hiking play. You want me to go? Or yeah, go ahead. All right, for height gameplay, it's a fairly straightforward change, but it should also make the game a lot easier to read and still play tactical dynamics with our cover system. Is The big thing is your height like, cover bonus will no longer ignore the other person's cover bonus, which is probably one of the biggest complaints about height gameplay was you could just ignore someone's cover just by being on maybe not maybe around three meters higher than the enemy, which wasn't always clear mm -hmm. to the opponent. And there was no real counterplay to it. Like uh, you can't take cover or you're just going to get hit. You just got to clear that zone, but we've changed it now. So our height gameplay is now more focused around. Um, yeah, you get the high ground that does give you a good advantage. But if you take cover against someone who's on the high ground, you'll still you have that much higher survivability than you would. We also want to keep the height bonuses in general a little bit higher than they are right now uh, because uh, we want things like the taller garrisons to offer players an advantage versus rather than just you know i take cover behind sandbags rather than taking mm -hmm. the big garrison yeah the 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 effective difference we're hoping is that height gameplay will still be very relevant particularly around garrisons mm -hmm. but now where you as the opponent or the player who is not in the garrison it matters where you put your unit before it it didn't matter at all. You're, if you were in the open or if you were in cover, made no difference. Now it does, um, but yeah. So we we're hoping that this adds a lot of more gameplay around uh, those mechanics. Okay. Um, any other general changes you want to get to before we talk about things like snares yeah. and detection? Uh, no, uh, let's get into snares. All right. So um, for snares, we are basically doing a uh, kind of a standardized change 
where A, we're bringing up the regular stairs to 120 damage. So some of them did 110, which caused some awkward marks where some vehicles would get away with ever so little health. Um, the, the other major change is that at Veteran C2, they will now go from 120 to 160 damage, which means they're break, they're going to be often one less shot to kill, uh, and or they will just snare vehicles with bonus health, or just uh, they will just snare vehicles uh, uh, more likely. Okay. Um, anything else to to add there, Darren? So the point of this is we wanted infantry like compositions that are like you know trying to support units like anti tank guns from not being as easy to overrun run in more mid game stage when you're starting to get those veteran veteran infantry units because a mm -hmm. lot of the heavier vehicles like the Werble Wind, they can pretty much just go through multiple snare infantry, rerun through the line and try to overrun that anti tank gun. We want to give players a little bit more options in like deterring vehicles from doing that play because it, it is already anti tank gun play is already a lot more difficult oh, compared to using things like our light vehicles in the game. Mm -hmm. And this also offers a little bit more deterrent against vehicles and in general and makes even later vehicles have to back off a bit more from regular infantry. Mm -hmm. and, and this is part of our larger adjustment. And, and we're not going to achieve this all in one patch. So like the meta read we mentioned before, um, while that is definitely our goal to shift that, we're not going to try and just shift that all in one quick go because it's very easy to go overboard. Um, so we're, just, we're putting in a set of changes this patch that should be a step in that direction that should kind of reduce it. And then we'll monitor, hey, did these changes go as far as we expected or not? And then we'll either do more or we'll do less than the next one uh, as, as we go on. But yeah, this is to kind of bring up infantry, as, as Darren mentioned, supporting other vehicles or units to be much more relevant, especially later in the game when bonuses activate, defenses activate, and all that. Okay. Uh, should we get into detection? Because I know there were a ton of changes. Uh, yeah, yes. This is the important one because we got a <laughs> battle group that you, you're going to need this for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so obviously the, with the battlefield espionage, which we talked about last week, uh, a huge component of that uh, battle group is concealment uh, mm -hmm. and stealth, um, which uh, in when I first saw that, I was like, how are we supposed to play against this? Um, but obviously you you have a bunch of changes in store um, to do just that. Um, so, so, so what are we doing here? All right, so the change is we are giving essentially players a set of units and abilities that are going to be used that that can essentially just reveal stealth units in general. Prior games have had this, but it, for us, it didn't make sense to go the full way until we had like that full battle group group that was based around stealth to fully test and implement and stealth mm -hmm. detection. And for our stealth detection, we uh, we have pretty much gone with most factions will have at least two vehicles that can spot up cloaked units, as well as one infantry unit. But in addition to that, we also have all the flares in the game, all the recon planes, most of those little sight abilities is will allow you to detect these stealth units because we want counterplay mm -hmm. rather than just the current counterplay is you hope you have enough to overrun run that stealth unit that does pop up from Cloak or you have the right counter nearby. Mm -hmm. Now you should be able to at least spot them before you run into the danger. Yeah. But we're dubbing the, the system and these units detectors. Um, so be, uh, we'll have a list in the patch notes. But in the game, you'll see that units will have the dub uh, detector. And these units will basically be able to see units at 25 range rather than the normal, I think it was 15. Um, so uh, th this means that you know you have these units that can cunt enemy camo units, uh, but it is important to mention that it's 25 range, regular combat is 35. So uh, if you're quick on the ball or on the, on the draw, uh, detector units can still ambush, uh, or sorry, camo units can still ambush detectors, mm -hmm. but it's much, it, it forces them basically, to either choose their engage or to back away. Uh, it should, if you support your regular army with your detectors or your detector abilities, so one big one is, for example, the US rec uh, recon run from the Air Support Center, that's a, that, that, is, that is a detecting run. So you can use that to, you know, reveal enemy ambushers before you need to encounter them. Um, but yeah, things like flares, things like recon planes, these will be significantly more useful. Uh, we're hoping that this gives them a new breath of life, and mm -hmm. we'll see how players go. Um, it's a new system, so obviously there will be some growing pains. We'll see how uh, the detectors land. 
um, and we'll either tune them up or down depending on how how we see ambush play goes. Because we want to keep ambush play, we very much think it's cool, but at the same time, we definitely want more counterplay in the game, and hence these units. So yeah, okay. Um, so is is there anything else that we want to cover with that new system, or should we just move to some of the other general changes? Uh, yeah, I think we can start going into some other general changes. Okay. Uh, you want to talk about recovery? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's your show. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, Darren, you want to go or you uh, want yeah, me to go? Yeah, I can go. Yeah. Oh, so for recovery, we're doing a, well, I would say not the biggest change, but we are changing it so that recovery is going to be sped up significantly before it took way too long to recover even the smallest vehicle. Mm -hmm. Also, we wanted those vehicle, like recovery to just not, you know, you sit there for a minute, you're still recovering that 250 that got killed at the five minute mark. And your recovery vehicle is still there after a minute. Mm -hmm. So we are speeding that up significantly, but we're also making the change where when you do recover vehicles, what you're now also going to pay a slightly higher premium for, or that if once you recover that vehicle, that vehicle is for the most part, almost, almost near death. So, oh, if you recover a vehicle, but the opponent is still in the area, the opponent can has a very good chance of immediately taking out that recovered vehicle if they have the right tools, because we're, we're essentially making all vehicles that get recovered have 10% of their life. And the only vehicles that are going to resist anti-tank or anti-vehicle weapons are those end game yeah. heavy tanks. So yeah, so reco expect recovery to be significantly faster, but slightly more expensive and arguably the same risk. Um, it's kind of to compensate the fact that it's so fast. Okay. Uh, what's next? Yeah, um, well, I'll just quickly mention them uh, all in go because I, I think the patch notes kind of illustrate the the effect. But uh, we've given snipers, anti tank guns, and light mortars uh, a slight change. Uh, so snipers have gotten buffed. AT guns have gotten an ever so slight adjustment to make them a little bit more effective. Uh, and then light mortars have received uh, a tone back. Because we've noticed that mortars in particular are a little too punishing against uh, machine guns in particular right now. We're noticing that even if you immediately try to dodge a barrage, you still take way too much damage. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're toning that back ever so slightly. Um, Speaking of which, we're also buffing the machine guns to be a bit more to where they were mm -hmm. before. So now you'll be in that, that two burst pin area because yes. we want MGs to be better at locking down areas. Currently, yeah. it takes too long for MGs to... to, pin. to yeah, pin and lock down infantry. And we feel it's fine to do that now because there's a lot more counterplay to the MGs it's... through stronger mortars, stronger grenades, mm -hmm. and just the game being more mobile compared yeah. to our previous titles. Okay, cool. Uh, what else? Um, we also have some more minor changes. Uh, mines will no longer uh, have now been capped to kill only two entities. So no more uh, losing a full scout squad or a full pioneer squad if you're unlucky. Um, that is no longer going to be a thing. In terms of sandbags, we've also doubled essentially the time it takes to build. Uh, while we like players building cover, we've made we've realized that it's a little too cheap to just build small sandbags, for example, on points. Mm -hmm. uh, and we while we want players to build cover, we want players to really have to think about when they build cover, it needs to be a conscious choice with the cost. Uh, and right now it's just way too cheap. Um, right. So we're, we're, we're currently increasing the value uh, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. So I can't just run to the point, drop my sandbags. and <laughs> On every win, single win point, there's the two little sandbags yeah. that the flag. <laughs> Hopefully that'll no well, longer you can be still do it. It's just gonna take you tw uh, yeah. uh, okay. 20 seconds. Yes. All right. Um, yeah. A few more minor changes. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about the re experience one. So we're making we're, we're boosting it ever so slightly. So at every level, when you uh, kill a veteran unit, you get more e experience, and we're toning that up by five percent per level. So at that one, it's uh, twenty percent more rather than fifteen. And now we're uh, at, but at, this kicks up very much in vet three. So if you nail a vet three unit, uh, it'll give you sixty percent instead of the old forty five. So hopefully this is to reduce a little bit the gap we've noticed. If someone gets a veteran unit faster, it kind of nullifies any unit that is lower vet and they, they really struggle to get back into the game. Uh, we're hoping that while this doesn't nerf veteran units that players have earned, this makes it so that if players outplay their opponents and kill them, uh, they're able to get back. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, and you want to talk about the load times? Yeah, it's a, just a quick change. We standardize our load times across the board for the transport vehicles. Mm -hmm. So essentially, the a, you only have to wait now 0 0.5 seconds max once the loading process starts for everyone to get on board, regardless mm -hmm. of where they are, before you have to wait maybe one to two seconds per entity, depending where it is, for everyone to load into the truck. Mm -hmm. So we're standardizing that to be much quicker and snapper, snappier. Mm -hmm. So okay. well, hopefully that allows people to either enter their vehicles much faster, but also exit them and without waiting as long. Yeah. It should also help towing a little bit, but that we are looking at towing for future adjustments. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Very cool. Um, ultralight machine guns. What's what's yeah. going on there? The, just as a clarity change, this this is more. Uh, so we used to have it so that um, it, it's an artifact in the data. Every eight or so bursts, they would reload, but there's no animation for mm -hmm. it. And it would have a different timing than the regular uh, weapons. Um, and this was very unclear. Uh, this this would cause a lot of times where players would be like, why is my unit not shooting? Um, what's going on? Uh, so we basically toned that back. Now, a lot of these might look like pretty significant buffs, but in the data, these are reloads that happen very, very intermittently. So the change to the damage is a slight increase, but it's fairly marginal. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, in short, um, essentially, it's just you'll just notice the reload the, as, an, as another cooldown between each burst mm -hmm. the unit is firing. It's a quality of life change, hopefully. Okay, cool. All um, right, let's get into the factions. All right, I was going to ask. No, no more general stuff. Let's talk about factions. <laughs> uh, U.S. forces, what's uh, what's happening here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. For U.S. forces, we're redistributing some of their power amongst the support centers. ISC is generally getting too much play. MSC pretty much gets no play. Hey, so we're redistributing some of the effectiveness between the two support centers. So yeah, MSC essentially got a major rework that mm -hmm. should allow it to see more play in general, especially for US armor play. But we've also redistributed some of USF's power in general as the faction. We noticed that in the late game, when they can get their Hellcats and Bulldozers up, it's too hard for the Axis to essentially counter them with their core roster of you units and this is on top of things like hey you yeah i just go infantry support center i don't need to get better vehicles with the msc so oh a lot more of the power on the us vehicles will be found on that msc mm -hmm. rather than on the stock unit itself yeah in, in terms of like furthering that idea is um before we kind of had troubles balancing the three support centers and we very early recognized that the state of the MSC was just not very, it was not in a state that was easily balanceable. So we were waiting for basically the opportunity to do this kind of major overhaul. And this is kind of the push to really start getting all three support centers to be properly balanced between the three of them. We've known there's been a major fluctuation between them before. Uh, but yeah, infantry support center is going to be significantly more about a uh, heavy investment into infantry that is not as compatible with regular vehicle play as it was before. So you'll see that the fuel costs for their upgrades have gone up um, in exchange that their manpower costs have gone down to allow you to get more infantry. In exchange, we've actually locked some of the abilities already on current vehicles away and put them into the MSC um, so that uh, regular regular Amer USF play basically doesn't have access to them, and you need to invest in the MSC to get access to that power. Um, and then ASC, we're currently keeping as is, though the detection we do expect to be a pretty major buff in utility for that uh, center. So hopefully we now have a meaningful difference between you, know, you can invest in good late game infantry, uh, powerful vehicles, or good just general round utility. Um, and to support this as well, we've also added the, uh, well, I dubbed them Super Zooks upgrade, but the improved rockets <laughs> upgrade yeah. in the weapon support center. Um, this buffs all bazookas in, in your army, period. So it doesn't matter what unit is carrying it to do 33% more damage. So it, basically two bazooka hits will go from 120 to 160 damage, which means that th this is an important breakpoint that makes it kill most vehicles either one or two volleys short. Um, now, this doesn't increase its penetration or its accuracy, so the counterplay remains the same of keeping bazookas at arm's length and keeping your front armor towards it. But this is to reward players either fighting lighter vehicles or those who can get meaningful flanks 
uh, with their bazookas and help those units skip. Okay. Um, there's lot, lots of process. <laughs> we we got all over the place with this uh, one. Lots of process there. Um, did, did, did we want to drill down a little bit more on the uh, mechanized support center yes. changes? Because yeah. I know we replaced one of the uh, abilities there with, with something I'll else. Go, with this one. Yeah. go ahead. So we've replaced the Aura Heal found on the mechanized support center with a designated forward repair station where you pick a territory point that's in your control and a number of engineers that will spawn who can only repair. And they are there until the point is decaptured or you designate a new site and those engineers will mm -hmm. then shift, similar to like designate defensive line and, and that you find in Coastal. This was done because we wanted the mechanized support center or to have more impact on your units, particularly at the front, because mm -hmm. it takes too long to draw a vehicle back to mm -hmm. your HQ you to repair so we wanted an ability that allows the mechanized support center to be relevant even on like larger maps or yeah. maps where you're not going to be pulling back to the base cut as there are times where like i need repairs but i haven't taken enough damage i don't want to pull straight back to the hq yeah, yeah. and that, that yeah that that ability just appears as like a little button above your attack map, yes right? yep. it's yeah. on the faction panel on the left so where you would find the air support center or mm -hmm. the ability you would find the uh, designate forward repair station also there. Okay. This is, uh, hopefully this will also equalize the strength of this between 1v1 and 4v4. Bringing units back to your base is a very different prospect in 1v1 compared to 4v4. Um, and uh, just, just to be clarify, the first use of this when you get the MSC is free. Um, hopefully this gives you some momentum as well. But yeah, so this way team players can set up repairs forward on the map rather than being forced to bring things back to their base, which is, you know, just more expensive in a larger team game than in a smaller game. Right. And will this affect all friendly vehicles? Yes. Yep. They okay. will affect friendly vehicles, but it should be noted this is not an aura like the original repair station. The engineer squad will run from vehicle to vehicle to ah, vehicle okay. to get these repairs. So gotcha. it will not scale. Or it will not multiply with the amount right. of so there is a scaling upgrade for them. There is an upgrade for them. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I don't think we need to go into the yep. details of all of the specific upgrades. Read the patch notes if you're interested. Yep. There's a lot uh, of changes to MSC. There's a lot of changes there. Yeah, and we're hopefully, you know, we're excited to see players use it. Um, but yeah. Okay. Is, is there anything else that you want to touch on with the U.S. forces? Uh, so we, we can drill a little bit into detail about the vehicle changes, I think. Hellcat and Dozer? So yeah, the, 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 the Hellcat and the Dozer. So the Hellcat, I'll start with the Hellcat and we can do the other one. Um, the Hellcat we've noticed has just been a little too dominant, um, just overall. Uh, it's been able to not only outduel enemy armor, uh, both heavy and lighter ones, but also kite them uh, and also chase them. Um, so with the engine ability in particular, if you're, if you're, if you're re really good with it, you can basically always dictate the pace of the combat, which was a little overwhelming. So A, we've locked that upgrade behind MSC. So not every USF player will not have access to that by default, but we've also reduced the fire rate of the Hellcat, um, so that it's more dependent on this ability for it to chase and kite rather than being able to both fight you run away from you and also chase you. Hopefully it can only do one of the two, requiring some more setup, some more uh, facilitation from other factors or just better micro in order to achieve the same results. Mm -hmm. uh, for Bulldozer, yeah. Yeah, yep. And I'll just add on to the Hellcat. We also feel we can, we're doing this change because the Hellcat is also cheaper than a lot of the yes. things that it's meant to counter. We still want it at that lower price point, but we also don't want it to like, dominate units that are like more on the higher price point mm -hmm. okay uh so what about the uh, bulldozer for the bulldozer we mainly just did two changes is we wanted the dozer to be more heavier in its cost because you do get a lot from the dozer you get more health you get more armor mm -hmm. and we wanted to differentiate a little bit more from the standard sherman so we're going to slow it down um, just a little bit more so that it is easier to hit with things like anti-tank weapons it's harder for the bulldozer to disengage and that will also mean if you lower the dozer blade to try and clear mines, it makes the bulldozer incredibly slow. Oh, it's will be quite vulnerable if you're trying to just push it forward yeah. or as a mine clearing tool. Mm -hmm. Because as we the bulldozer probably has a just a little bit too much effectiveness compared especially when you pair it up with the Hellcat that, that we're adjusting. Okay. Yeah. Uh what what else for the US forces here? Uh 
we have some more minor adjustments to abilities and specific units here and there. But I think for the most part, um, check out the patch notes. Um, yeah, I, I think we can move past most of these. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, so we want to talk about the Wehrmacht. Yeah. Uh, you want to you want to start this one? Uh, yeah, for the Wehrmacht, we are doing some quite a bit of heavy changes to the faction, particularly in like the tier one. We'll, you can all cheer that Grenadiers are finally getting a combat buff. That's uh, because the faction is being... It's, focuses a little bit too much on the Luftwaffe company. We want like greater play from both the starting tier and the Panzer Grenadier company, as well as the Panzer company. Mm -hmm. Currently, the faction has just been in too focused on like Jaegers, Panzer Shreks, Werbelwinds, and Mars. We want to see more di mm -hmm. strategic diversity within the faction. And we're hoping that the changes that we do we will not only do that to the core army, but also to some of the battle groups because We've made a significant change to also want, want their officer quarters upgrade. Yeah. And, and to be clear, rather than just hard nerfing those things, we do recognize that Wehrmacht right now needs a little bit more power. So you'll be seeing there's quite a few buffs coming to this faction uh, to just make it make a lot of the things that weren't quite as viable, hopefully a lot stronger. Um, so yeah, we can get, kind of get into the details here. Starting with the, one of the big systematic changes that we're doing to them is now officer quarters will now affect battle group units. Uh, this is a long time coming, but for uh, how this works is basically the infantry company officer quarters now buffs all of the units in that tier, but also units of zero to one CP cost, basically. Um, so this is like your Falsham Pioneers, your officer, your coastal reserves. Uh, your tier two building, regardless of which one you get, uh, will upgrade all of your mid-game uh, uh, column units, basically. Everything up until excluding the Tiger and the Panther, and I believe, I think the Obiche, which all requires the final tier. Okay. Um, this way, so we, you finally have proper integration between your proper faction mechanic and your battle group units. And hopefully this makes some strategies either a little bit stronger or it actually enables some new kinds of ways of playing. Uh, for example, like that one, Falsham Pioneers uh, with some support, for example. Um, yeah. Moving on, we have some, uh, let, let, let's get into tier one. So we have a small buff to the Pioneer, where if uh, with their, their fast capture ability gives them slightly more capping. But the main the main topic is the Grenadier is finally getting quite a few buffs. Um, we've been debating in terms of what direction to kind of push this unit, because we don't want it to overshadow the advanced infantry that Wehrmacht can build. Uh, but at the same time, clearly in the last few patches, they've been they're underpowered right mm -hmm. so we're bringing them up to par with quite a few changes their list is quite long but kind of getting into it they the the combat bonus they will now do a little bit more dps primarily at close range to punish units that kind of just run at them um this isn't meant to make them uh out compete other mainline infantry but this is to make them trade significantly well just make the trade them better. Now, this com comboed with a lot of their other changes hopefully really increases the efficacy of the unit. So, for example, the medkits is now an AoE heal. And also, the, their Panzerfausts are more effective at both VET1, VET2 with the global change, and then at VET3 as well. So, to really increase the support of the unit. Uh, yeah. Do you want me to get into yeah. it? So, for things like the medkit... It, it's similar to like Company of Heroes too. We want the Grenadier to be able to support tier one play of not just Grenadiers, but also vital units like the MG42, anti-tank guns, mortars, advanced infantry. Mm -hmm. We want the Grenadier to be able to provide support by being able to heal those units up because you would end up in situations where, hey, you have maybe one to two Grenadiers, they have that one, but your machine gun, which is like your main firepower is like on half health. Full, full, all four models are there, and like, mm -hmm. what do I do? I can't, I can't heal this thing, yeah. and then you can't merge, obviously, because mm -hmm. you haven't lost the models yet. So we want Grandiers to play, in general, a greater support role once they, once you start hitting the mid to late game. And so they're going to be very effective at stopping vehicles by staring them from long range, as well as keeping your infantry forces up, mm -hmm. up. So if and it also means if you invest heavily into the Grenadier, you can do a sort of heal skip. It with the faction, so yeah, okay, yeah, forward healing or heal skip, 
Yeah, the, I think these are going to be some uh, welcome changes. As, as you know, even personally, I've, I found sometimes it was hard to justify Grenadiers instead of just you mm-hmm. know just just maybe for merge versus like just stalling for something like um, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. you know the the Falsham or, or some uh, you know another advanced infantry. So I think uh, I think players are going to like these changes. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? What else do we want to talk about here with with the Vermont? Yeah. So we have quite a few changes going to the Panzer Grenadier tier for uh, Vermont. Uh, Darren, you want to go through yeah, some of them? So some of the Panzer Grenadier has been a target. We already saw this with like the anti-tank gun change, and we hope with the Grenadier change, this will also make the Panzer Grenadier tier more viable, as that tier is more reliant on things to stop units from flanking its anti-tank gun and the Stug. Mm-hmm. But for starting with the Panzer Grenadier company, we have done a bit of a buff to the Panzer Grenadier. They're going to be able to capture faster, and they have a little bit more offensive firepower at mid-range. As we noticed, because Wehrmacht generally only has maybe one to two Panzer Grenadier squads on the field, they have to take up that capture duty a lot more than, say, other factions who might have four to five other main lines. But we're also not just the capture and firepower increase, we're making their bundle grenade the most lethal grenade in the game. So they always have that threat where if there's a Panzer Grenadier on the field, oh, you must be aware of the bundle grenade, which it is where a, a significant more power yeah a significant more amount of their power will be coming from rather than just like raw firepower from their yeah. assault rifles right. yeah on top of that um yeah well, we have some minor adjustments to things like the stug so the stug is now going to be uh, more effective in general uh but particularly uh at like longer range with against vehicles we buffed its long range pen. We buffed its reload speed, uh, but we did nerf its AOE mostly to, to get rid of some of the weird RNG that we introduced with the last change uh, for the Stug. So now when they shoot at infantry, you won't have the as much of a randomness of like, sometimes the Stug will kill three guys all of a sudden. Uh, that's no longer be much of a thing, but the Stug is gonna be much better in its AT role um, as a brawler. Um, on top of this, in terms of going back to the other Jaeger tier, uh, we've buffed G43s to hopefully make them a little bit more attractive. We've noticed that this has just not been that good. Um, and then we have some really light nerfs to the 221 and the Whirlwind. Um, the Whirlwind AOE nerf mostly affects units that are really clumped up. We've noticed that against units in the open, the Whirlwind is somewhat okay. But against units that clump up, sometimes it can really blast units out mm-hmm. of existence, which we didn't want. Um, so yeah, uh, we're, we're making those changes. In terms of the other major shift for Wehrmacht, other than the kind of rebalance for their tier one and their battle groups, is tier four. Um, so we're making their final tier uh, hopefully a lot more attractive, but by A, their final tier is 20 fuel more cheaper, uh, but also the units in, in them are slightly cheaper now. So the Stostruppen is 40 manpower cheaper and one population less. And the Panzer IV is slightly cheaper, but more importantly, fires faster now. Okay. Uh, we want it to be a little bit more threatening to enemy vehicles in particular, and this changes uh, in that vein. Okay. Um, some final changes we have, uh, for example, the Tiger has 80 more armor frontally. We've noticed that it's a little bit too easy to just demolish the Tiger uh, from the front, and we want this vehicle to feel heavy, right? To feel as like a breakthrough tank. So we're tuning up its armor just in the front. So if you find its sides or rear, it's still very vulnerable, but this way it's much more effective as a breakthrough vehicle. Okay. Uh, was there anything else that we wanted to cover with the uh, Wehrmacht, um, maybe with the battle groups? Uh, I, th- I think we're doing just some slight tune-ups to breakthrough. You, you, you'll you see this in some of the patch notes. We're tuning up breakthrough slightly so its abilities are a bit more effective or you can get them earlier. Mm-hmm. And that's why you also see things like the Tiger being buffed in its frontal armor. Mm-hmm. We want that battle group to be more effective yeah. if for pl- or player use. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, should we move to the next faction? Yes. Uh, right. So for the British, they're... British is getting a fairly minor change because they got most of their changes in uh, in the previous patch. So Mm -hmm. we're mainly just doing some adjustments to them. Um, Mainly just toning down some things like making the Humber take a little bit more experience. Hence the Grant takes slightly longer to unlock because it is that very powerful premium vehicle. Oh, and just a few other changes. Though, British, if you want to play defensive now, 
In addition to your Aussies who are coming soon, you can now build MG nests. Yeah. So you yeah, a the, bit the main changes is the new battle group. Uh, mm -hmm. We're excited to see how pl players play with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, we've kept most of the faction unchanged. Uh, we're a lot, as you can see, we have a lot of changes to Axis in particular, but also USF got a major overhaul. So we're like, we, in terms of dedicating resources, we've kept this constant and we changed the other things. Uh, and hopefully, you know, everything reaches parity. Yeah. So you'll also see some adjustments that that are more nerfs to, say, the DAC than, say, adjusting the British mm -hmm. that you'll see later on. Because we think the British are in a good spot. There's one thing that they struggle with, but that is something we will be addressing when we reach DAC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Which, um, anything else with the, with the British before we move on? No, let's move on. But speaking of DAC, yeah, it's right. Yeah. <laughs> so you want? Yeah, to I'll, I'll do this one. So um, DAC uh, has been it, interesting enough. Has seen a major shift in the last patch uh, in terms of how it's played, which is good. Uh, we we the new style is quite cool, but we've noticed it can be somewhat oppressive uh, in certain scenarios. And yet, for example, like right out of the gate against Brits, it's a little overly oppressive. So we're, do we're doing some tone backs of that mid early mid game strategy, but at the same time, we are toning up its late game. Um, in particular, we've noticed that this has just been a faltering point of the faction overall, and we're finally making some changes here. So the big changes is the final tier has become cheaper, and also the armored reserves has also seen a major reduction. Um, so inside of armored reserves, it, uh, the columns are now a hundred manpower cheaper, um, but they are slightly more fuel expensive because we've noticed the, the calibration on that wasn't quite correct. And the tiger has been significantly discounted from what was a really a different cost. Uh, yeah. From before. Okay. Um, so hopefully the tiger is going to be a thing again. Um, bring it, uh, but yeah, um, in terms of, uh, we've also, in the final tier, finishing that off, the, the Stuka has also uh, gotten a minor buff. Uh, so hopefully with all of these changes, the final tier is much more attractive. All right. But outside of the final tier, we have the mid-game changes. Um, Darren, you want to get into them? Uh, mid-game changes, I want to talk a little bit more. In the oh, sure. Yeah, go ahead. So just to address on the final tier, one of the reasons we're doing like these significant cost adjustments and changes in general to like armored reserves is because the DAC tier, the final tier for DAC is not equivalent to the other final tier of the other factions. The DAC doesn't have that sort of heavy armor or heavy endgame infantry. Mm -hmm. It's all fuel based units or the ADH. Eight, so we wanted to give a DAC like another option where they can get their tanks out a little bit faster than the other factions because obviously the Panzer III is not as powerful compared to the tier four vehicles of those factions. Mm -hmm. Okay. As for like the early mid game changes, as we mentioned in the British, we want to tone back units like the assault grenadiers. So we're making them easier to stop by slightly lowering their health at like the early game levels. So that should allow like more focus fire to just halt yeah. the assault grenadier from just running up to infantry units and winning the fight. Yeah, we moved 10 of its health from its base to its vet too. So and you'll you'll get it back later on, but it's, it's the tone back the out of the gate performance. And we've also toned back the Panzerjäger. We're making them less effective at long range. They'll still be better than when they, mm -hmm. what they were before the previous patch, but they were a bit too powerful, especially against light vehicles at their timing because they were so mobile and with their camouflage. Yeah. We're also doing some more adjustments like reinforce and population changes because we don't want players to be making large amounts of Panzerjägers to be their primary AT force for that mid-game period. We want players to have maybe around one to two squads to support anti-tank squads. Mm -hmm. for the DAC, rather than being used in like these large masses, ju just to hold off enemy vehicles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, th those are kind of the main uh, main changes. Uh, we also have a pretty major buff to versus as well. Um, this is one of those units that uh, we've, we've been wanting to make uh, major changes to. Uh, we wanted to actually change the combined arms battle group quite a lot, uh, several patches in a row now. Uh, we, we haven't been able to get major changes to live, so Versus have kind of languished a little. Um, and while we still haven't been able to get that out yet, um, we, we were giving it basically kind of this uh, uh, immediate buff to kind of just get it a little bit into the better place so that they're a little bit more in, uh, good to use. And yeah, I think that wraps up DAC.
Okay, so uh, some fun stuff coming yeah. for all the factions. Oh, man, that was long. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was long. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about the uh, Bersaglieri change. Um, overall, though, I, I kind of um, wanted to quickly wanted to quickly ask you both about the new battle groups because obviously those are you know two new huge additions to the British British forces and the uh, Deutsche Afrika Corps. Mm -hmm. um, how do we sort of envision these impacting the overall multiplayer meta, mm. and how do we expect? Uh, players to uh, react to them uh, once once uh, once they get their hands on the update. Yeah, surprise question. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I'm personally very excited. Uh, both of them promote very different play than they regular uh, they do before. Hopefully, for example, for DAC, this kind of puts a spotlight on early game infantry play because that's kind of one of the big things is this idea of like uh, all you either get these fancy beacons to make your infantry a lot more effective early on. Um, and there's quite a few little goodies in there. I won't ruin every. Well, I mean, they'll, they'll know they'll know what's in it. But I, I like we've we've seen some early play testing, for example, and there's some really cool things that players can do with DAC mm -hmm. infantry. And we really haven't had a battle group that like really shine on the vanilla infantry of DAC. Uh, and this is one of those battle groups, so we're very excited for that. Mm. Um, Darren, any comments on that one? Uh, no, I think you said yeah. it. the big thing of the DAC battle group is that infantry play that they generally don't do for the most part. So they should yeah. put some bit more emphasis on that infantry play, but also should put into like with these changes more use into scouting and detection units as that sort of counter to that battle group, or at least yeah. spotting the enemies before it's too late. Mm -hmm. For for the for uh, British uh, Australian defense. Um, I'm also really excited to see some final, some defensive Brit play. Mm -hmm. uh, Co three has gone a very different direction with Brits in general, with being a much more mobile, much more aggressive force than the previous titles. Uh, but some this brings back some of that DNA. Uh, it brings back emplacements, for example. So I'm really excited to see our take on that because um, the way we've done emplacements has been a little bit different from both Co one and Co two. Uh, so I'm very excited to see if you know how players engage with that um and you know the 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 new style and there's also the uh the, the supply truck um I won't ruin too much about how that ended up in play tests but that, <laughs> that was a lot of fun yeah um, um Dar yeah. Dar yeah Darren I, I know we got your your uh um sort of take on uh the Australian defense uh, uh, when we talked to you last week um in the battle mm -hmm. group overview um but yeah any, anything to add about uh how you think they're going to shake up the meta I think it'll be interesting, at least for the British side, because you'll have that stronger infantry that you can immediately call in, in, but, you know, it comes at a cost. There are significant weaknesses that we discussed about the Australian light infantry mm -hmm. when you go that route. Mm -hmm. But we'll also see that interesting in things like Jason mentioned regarding defense play, and we'll see how that combos with, with the truck of, like, I need to protect my truck against incoming threats. That's, can I protect my truck? Again, how, like, the... Australian defense players are going to set up defenses yep. and hopefully the truck becomes like a major component of the game plan for the Auss Aussies. Okay. Uh, final thoughts on uh, all, all the work going into um, Coral Viper 1.6. Uh, Jason, what, what uh, yeah. just, just, yeah, just what, what are your final thoughts on all the work that you two here have uh, done for balance? Yeah. So uh, a high level thought for me is just, I, I, I hope, um, uh, you know, we're trying, we're doing efforts to try and be a little bit more transparent with how we're doing our balance. Hence why we're kind of talking about, hey, how, what is our process? How are we thinking about things? What our read is? Uh, anyone on the internet probably knows that kind of opens us up to some, some degree of attack as well. But I hope that this degree of transparency is like, it's very sincere. It's very honest. As you can see, this is not a very scripted whole <laughs> process, right? So it's just me. It's just Darren. We're, we're the balance team. We're here to chat with you guys, right? So um, yeah, it's it's and and I get you know we've made certain mistakes in the past, but we're constantly listening to feedback. We're trying to improve the game alongside with the community, um, and you know we're, we're going to make more efforts in the future to try and be more transparent. Uh, hopefully, this time around, we've improved our patch notes. Uh, we're we're going to be listening to feedback on that as well, but we want like we we're giving our, more of our thoughts, and we're, we're letting players know, hey, this is what we're doing, why we're doing it, uh, and hopefully this improves, you know, the two way communication, and we can make the game better, right? Cool. But the end the, the end goal is to make the game more fun, allow you to use all the wacky, wacky things that you want to use, and I hopefully like we're in the same you know we're, we're in the same wave wavelength here. Okay, uh, yeah. Darren, anything to add there? 
Yeah, you're running off that at least for the patch in particular, this patch in particular, or we're hoping that that once this patch hits, that there'll be a bit more strategic diversity across the board for the various factions. We're hoping we'll, we'll mm -hmm. see more of those like tank battles between the various factions mm -hmm. and and late gameplay. There are significant and buffs to those units, so we're hoping that well, they see a lot more use. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are we are we are we are fine if the tiger is invulnerable from from the front. <laughs> it's not, but you know. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's that's probably a good place to leave things. Uh, again, folks, if you want to stay up to date on everything Company of Heroes three, you're going to want to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch at Company of Heroes. Join our Discord and forums to leave your feedback and chat with other players. Of course, you can also find the patch notes for today at community.companyofheroes.com. So, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Coral Viper is going to be releasing today on PC. You can find the patch notes, like I said, on the forums. And don't forget, you want to claim your new battle groups for free by visiting the in-game store. Uh, so don't forget to do that. Uh, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Darren. And uh, you. we will see you all next time. Pick up your new battle groups now. <laughs>